You're pushing your cart down a grocery store aisle and notice a box of cereal with the label non-GMOs. You may know that GMO stands for genetically modified organism, but what exactly does that mean? The answer to this question has to do with genetic engineering, which involves changing an organism's genetic makeup. Every living thing has a genome that includes a set of instructions required for its function. Think of a genome like a recipe book. You find regions of DNA known as genes, which, when expressed, make proteins that have many responsibilities. Insulin, for instance, is a protein that regulates the levels of glucose, or sugar, in your blood. However, there are certain genetic or lifestyle factors that can make it more difficult for people to generate insulin on their own. When that happens, they can develop diabetes, a chronic disease that affects about 422 million people worldwide. As a form of treatment, doctors give diabetic people insulin. But where does this insulin come from? It's made by manipulating DNA, the primary target of genetic engineering. By editing the DNA of bacteria, scientists can instruct the bacteria to produce insulin that can then be isolated and used in humans. Nowadays, researchers can delete or manipulate genes that are already present within an organism to give it new traits or change its existing characteristics. But how does this apply to the cereal you're holding? This technology can also be used to modify the genetic material of plants, including grains. The majority of essential micronutrients, such as vitamins and minerals, are not produced by the human body and must be derived from our diet. As an example, we get vitamin A from our diet in the form of two sources, preformed vitamin A from animal food sources and provitamin A from plants. Populations that mainly consume plant-based foods with no sources of vitamin A face an increased risk of blindness and are more prone to infectious diseases. In fact, vitamin A deficiency affects 190 million preschool-aged children globally. To combat this problem, scientists have taken advantage of food staples, such as rice, with the hope that people who consume them can have a diet with the proper amount of this micronutrient. Using genetic engineering, researchers created golden rice, which provides consumers with the provitamin beta-carotene. This molecule gets converted into vitamin A in the body and gives fruits and vegetables their yellow and orange colors. To produce golden rice that contains beta-carotene, researchers inserted a specific gene into the edible part of the rice grain, known as the endosperm. This gene comes from the daffodil plant and is part of the biochemical pathway that is essential to the production of beta-carotene. Researchers then tracked the inserted gene with additional marker genes and later grew rice embryos to ensure they produced beta-carotene. By using genetic engineering, scientists have supported a well-balanced diet in regions where vitamin A is deficient. Genetic engineering is not just limited to plants. It can also be applied to other organisms. Recently, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has authorized researchers to raise genetically modified pigs known as gal-safe pigs. The sugar molecule, called alpha-gal, can cause an allergic reaction in some people when they consume red meat or are exposed to certain products, like a heart valve from a pig during a valve replacement surgery. Gal-safe pigs are devoid of this sugar, thereby eliminating the risk of allergic reactions or organ rejection. Additionally, genetic engineering has been used to create faster-growing salmon and mimic human diseases, such as diabetes, in mice for further study. Despite various applications in agriculture and biomedical research, many ethical issues surrounding genetic engineering persist. Are genetically modified foods safe to consume? Can genetically modified crops eliminate nutritional deficiencies in growing populations? Does the increasing use of genetic engineering technology by multinational corporations represent a threat to small farmers' businesses and cultural traditions? And what are the possibilities for off-target effects and what entities regulate safe and equitable practices of animal welfare used in research? 
Although federal agencies in the U.S. control the regulation of genetically modified foods to ensure they are safe for consumption, scientists, bioethicists, and lawmakers need to work together to address its uses, given the complexity of genetic engineering and the ethical concerns that surround it. Let's go back to that box of cereal. Do you now have a better understanding of what that GMO label means? Please, let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. To continue learning more about the world around you, check out our previous SciTunes videos. You can also stay tuned about our upcoming projects by following us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.